Hey guys, Alex from Video Game Addicts, and today I am playing the Stanley Parable. And yes, it actually says down on the top left, you are playing the Stanley Parable. And um, so far, it looks pretty interesting. I mean, I see that on the uh, bottom right on the computer screen, it actually had the screen I'm looking at. It might even on your screen, it's probably gonna show the frap numbers, the frap numbers popping up, and that there's my frame rate and stuff. But whatever. Um, so yeah, I've heard a lot about this game. It's been getting pretty popular recently. I know it's been a Half-Life 2 mod for a while, but I never, I didn't have Half-Life 2 for very long. I just recently got it not too long ago. So I didn't really get much time to think about playing it because I've been playing too much of Gary's mod. And um, so yeah, well, let's go ahead and play this game. Um, something is never the end, is never the end, is never the end. Okay. The end is never the end. I think that's what it's pretty much trying to tell me. As we load. Huh. So I'm excited. I know there's a lot of like mind fucks in this game. Which I'm always interested to see these mind fucks because they're pretty interesting. I'm gonna turn, let me go ahead and turn off the uh, ringer on my phone. Turn my phone to silent. There you go. So that way. Nobody will be calling me doing this let's play, no no ringing of any sort, and this is taking a while to load. Alright, I'm excited to play this. This thing's got good reviews, 10 out of 10 all around. So, uh, I decided to spend that about 10 bucks or something, I think about 11 something on this game. In order to get it, and that's pretty much how much I had. I had like eleven dollars some cents. I only had like about a few, about like a quarter left after I bought this game. You know, Black Friday deal. I couldn't resist. All right. All right. This thing is definitely taking a while to load. I hope it's not going to be very slow frame rate when I play it. I haven't really tested that, which I probably should have. But uh, alas, could not. Oh, I did not, because I wanted to have first experiences recording. Okay, almost to the end. So I've been doing good. How y'all guys have been doing? I bet, bet y'all been having a amazing Thanksgiving break. I mean, it just now came to an end. Um, in fact, today is my last day of my summer vacation. I mean... By the time you watch this video, it'll probably be Monday. It should be Monday, I mean, unless there's a delay. Uh, but, yeah. Oh my god, can this thing go any slower? And as soon as I said that, it, it jumped. Okay. Come on. You're almost to the end. Almost to the end. Almost. It's almost there. Oh man, I can feel it. It's like at that 99% part. Oh. There you go. Click to skip. All right. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. All right. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Right. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, oh, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. 
Can we have anything? No. Hi, right, stepped out of the office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Where's the meeting room? Um, let me check all these doors. What is that? A game that looks familiar. It looks like a game I've seen. Press the button on that computer. Why don't I turn off all these monitors? Time to look for any secrets in this. Okay, I know there's probably chock full of them. Let's just say. I hate Mondays. Uh, don't we all? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Um, what happens if we go right? Is there something on the right? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Okay. To change the story. Nothing wrong. That looks weird. Well, I really don't know what to say about this game except for um, being controlled by a narrator. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. I did. Did I keep going? But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Why don't we keep going against the decision? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he okay. wasn't fired years <laughs> ago. Alright, let's just keep moving. Who cares about going in with the system? I can't jump or anything. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the Congrats. fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Okay. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Where do I go then? Who's she? There can be a jump scare in here. Please no jump scares. Oh. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Um. Picking up the phone? Okay, let's. Pick up the phone. What happened? Sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Get your day Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Actually, I did. You? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. No. Sorry, but you're in my story now. Motherfucker. God damn it. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. What? Press E on your keyboard. 
Wait. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Is he talking about me? Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told. Oh, to do. okay, I see what now you're doing. He's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now I'm not eating he's lunch. Going home. I'm not. I'm not eating lunch. What are you talking about? One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's. I don't know what he was talking about. But in his mind, ah, mm. in his mind, he can Stanley. go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Um, no, fantastic discoveries I haven't. New lands. My name's not Stanley, you asshole. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Press N to watch TV. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him ah. terribly. I have to. So, he went further. He imagined that he Just came through button. open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Press A to prepare dinner. This ain't gonna prepare he dinner. Through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible How paths it... and destinations. Down Wait one a minute. path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line. Every time I push the button and it involves one of these odds, it turns into like a business thing. Baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Okay, is it gonna it was such a turn something into a... And so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Ah, get me out of here. There's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Proceed and tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. What How fucker. could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Can you just let me? And I'm trying to tell him this: that in this world he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this, Stanley. The next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. And you can listen to this. How long do I have to wait here? Ah. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that it wouldn't let me do anything? He's electing to kill himself. This How can sucks! I can you I just get me out of How here? How can I make him look at himself? Okay, we get it. Pursue the question, nothing. I get it. I get it. I'll play the game you want. Just let me out. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. Fine. I'm compelled to. I must. You're such an asshole, narrator. Well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button, and I. Tr really? Um. So I died. Ah, oh, starting over. All of his co-workers were gone.